Welcome everyone to We the People Insider. I'm your host, SF Cali Conservative, bringing you another segment of Insider Insights. Today's topic is surrounding scientific secrets on 5G, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, CERN, and RFID chips. And while we've probably heard about many of the things I'll be covering today, I'm tying quite a bit together, which includes updates on each of the tech and what I consider to be a mind-blowing twist that's thought-provoking at the least, let's say. You see, recent advancements in sciences are now coming to fruition and has many people wondering, is humanity on the cusp of something great? Or will this be our last invention, humanity's digital replacement? You see, after coming back from vacation, I had planned on doing a video last week on a completely different topic, but I was led in a different direction when I plugged back in to get started on things. Upon logging in, something strange actually grabbed my attention. I noticed a lot of unusual chatter surrounding 5G in both the news and in the YouTube community. What I found strange wasn't the topic itself, it was actually rather the sheer volume of videos that came about recently and the hype surrounding its upcoming rollout that truly got my attention. I never wanted to do a video on this actually, but I felt compelled to look into it to say the least. With the launch of 5G no longer a distant idea and more like an imminent part of our future, and a near one at that, I started looking much, much deeper into it all. I started connecting some dots that are quite incredible and downright frightening actually when I saw exactly what it is, how it works, and the potential it truly has. Most of us I'm sure have heard about the 5G by now, but if you haven't, don't worry. You will be caught up very shortly. There's a few key elements to know prior to deep diving into the meat of 5G which hopefully sheds some light on things in a manner congruent with what I'm actually seeing too. While there's not much we can do to stop 5G from rolling out, there are things we can be aware of to help in our decision making when it's time to actually choose just how far we want this tech to be integrated into our lives. So here's what you really need to know about the 5G network and the science behind it all. It's pretty obvious by now that we're in a tech age and it's, it's booming at a mind-blowing speed. I mean, just look at artificial intelligence, AI. It's been ingrained into our society, our culture, our new way of thinking towards the future, and the evidence is pretty much everywhere. Just turn on any kid's channel and you can see an increasing trend of AI robo friend cartoons being pushed more and more to children these days. Notice how they strategically target all the children at all age groups, from toddlers to preschoolers to grade schoolers and teens. Gender specific is also targeted, ensuring coverage to as many demographics as possible. They're solidifying that the youth be exposed early to this, which will help in making their agenda work seamlessly when it's time to bring this fantasy into reality. And I know many of you might be thinking, well, robot cartoons have been around for a long time. What's the point being made here? And yes, I'll admit, they've been around. I've even watched similar shows like The Jetsons, Transformers, and Voltron to name a few when I was young and into my teens as well. But just remember folks, they've been preparing things for quite some time. And now that the tech's actually available, a major push to incorporate smarter bots into our daily lives will be standardized, normalized, as much and as frequently as possible. It's no longer just a fantasy. Accepting artificial intelligence and its role in society is very important, and more so, what's going to be coming with it. See, once the masses have accepted the ideas put forth, just like it is today, the shock and awe factor it once had less than just a decade ago is now nullified due to its vast acceptance of it. And so is any real resistance against a bigger agenda when the time comes. And rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, it is coming. What was once considered something found only in horror movies is now manifesting itself in real time. How something like Skynet from the movie Terminator is being welcomed with open arms is mind-boggling, regardless of the obvious dangers associated with it. And our data networks, they're no different than the artificial intelligence threat, especially if the plan is to integrate them both. You see, they've been warming up the water in the pot slowly for us, so we don't jump out. Well, that water's piping hot, and here we are. The sheep will have been groomed and trained to be lovers of self, not lovers of God, seeking instant gratification no matter how big a void that remains afterwards, craving more and more in what I call the Me First movement. And yet, ironically, while we seem more divided than ever, the desire for attention and our need to be connected continues to grow. Unfortunately, it's a digital connection that seems to be preferred over a personal interaction. And it's no coincidence that 4G is getting an upgrade, and much sooner than we think. You see, the timing is perfect, the narrative is simple. Due to the growing population, evolving technology, and data requirements needed for us to stay connected, 
changes need to take place. The solution to both our ever-growing impatience with idle time and our obsession with new technology is easy. If we want exponential advancements that will better humankind and bring more individual fulfillment to our lives, then we need a better network. And guess what? It's here. Enter 5G. 5G is the fifth generation of wireless connectivity. It proudly boasts speeds at least 10 times faster than that of its 4G predecessor. It has an increased capacity so more users and devices can be on at the same time, all the time. And let's not forget my personal favorite, a much lower latency, which put in layman terms means more data coming and going at a faster rate, which uh, decreases lag time or buffering time, if you will. And I know the raving fans of 5G can't wait to use this for the needed enhancements on things like virtual reality, smart cars, smart cities, smart surveillance, and let's not forget 5G will give AI the ability to become smarter too. Now, if you're still wondering exactly what 5G is and how it works, you're not alone. The FCC has done their very best to push this network forward through their FCC's 5G Fast plan as quickly as possible and for good reason. I'm sure most know by now that 5G uses a dangerously high frequency. That frequency is also known as a millimeter wave uh, or can be described as a microwave um, and broadly known more as like a radio frequency wave. People like Senator Kolbeck and others in the scientific community, the ones that are actually protesting against this rollout, have deemed these frequencies more as a wireless radiation. The data shows that microwave frequencies are carcinogenic to humans, similar to that of our current network, but think of it more like 4G, but on a lot of steroids. And here's the kicker. The FCC has created a type of immunity for itself, which avoids them from being held accountable to human health hazards associated to these frequencies, that these networks will be emitting. Unfortunately, the FCC standards for acceptable radiation levels, which were last done in 1996, are seriously flawed and outdated. And why so? Well, I guess it's because no other government agencies require the FCC to revise it since then, nor have they up to 2018. It's also important to note that the FCC have found a way to usurp local governments and violate our property rights by placing cell towers near homes which are installed in public places right outside our front doors, basically. And these cells are placed as close as 50 feet to residential dwellings. And the cell towers are typically erected at a distance ranging from about every two to 10 homes apart. Since the 5G cells use a higher frequency, which is great for data, but not for distance, uh, it essentially creates like a tsunami of microwave frequencies that will be bombarding us 24-7, 365. These same frequencies are part of what the military calls electromagnetic frequencies, or EMFs. These EMFs are used for a variety of things by the military too. Things like crowd control weapons, seen here in this vehicle mounted active denial system, basically shoots a frequency wave that move, makes people move out of the way because of the extreme heat. They say it's not lethal, but they do also have lethal force weaponization of these frequencies too, like lasers would be an example or others you may know uh, that they've tested successfully in mind control projects. The same frequencies used in the MK Ultra mind control program. So it's no wonder that even with all the scientific literature published about 5G's hazard to us and the environment, it's found no true stumbling block that otherwise should prohibit it from even going live to the public. In fact, we actually see the opposite. Companies like Qualcomm, they think it's possible to roll out their 5G phones this year in 2019 versus the expected 2020 date. You see this 5G is the final component in a multi-component system. And I'll be touching a little bit on this as we go on. Now I, I did want to bring this next segment in particular to your attention. It revolves around all the components associated to the 5G network, but it isn't the technical aspect, yet it runs tangent to the science. And I'll I'll be correlating it as we go to see if there's indeed any relevance in association to one another. So what is it? It's ancient text. And this text seems to eerily describe this network and what to expect, which is only in recent times in this tech age, uh, really made visible for us to look at and understand enough to even correlate. Some are calling it prophetic. Some say it's just another tinfoil hat theory and others label it simply a mere coincidence or many mere coincidences at that. But you be the judge as I compare the tech of today with the text of old connecting the dots for you to decide if it's just simply coincidence, tinfoil conspiracy, or truly prophetic and concise. Let me know what you think in the comment section below after you've seen the things for yourself. 
With that said, let's get right into things. So, it's important to understand how 5G operates on a basic level, and at this point you should. This is because you need to understand how it operates in order to look through a different lens. A lens that may reveal an alternate purpose than that of just fast internet speeds. So what is the alternate purpose of 5G I'm proposing? I like to think of it as the nervous system technology. The fifth and final technology actually needed to complete its purpose, which is giving rise to a beast system. A system that will monitor and control the world while tracking everything you do all the time. It seems we're told about this happening and what will actually come during this time period. And with the technology finally available, it seems a bit easier to identify how it may all come to pass, just like it was written. You see, I believe there's five major components to this tech that actually complete the B system and will finally enable it to be used for the one that the globalists had built it for. The one that will control the world with it. The one the Bible calls the beast, also known as the Antichrist, found in the book of Revelation. Now this needs to be backed by science if it's to hold any weight for many of the viewers out there. So let's see what science, current events, and roughly 10 verses have in common. The 10 verses of scripture that actually give a detailed outline for anyone willing to examine it and connect those dots. So who is the beast? Well the Bible describes the beast as the one who is given complete control over the world and uses a global system to maintain his authority. Uh, quickly, I did want to mention that since there's a ton of information published online regarding the Antichrist, I will be focusing on the beast system and not the beast figure itself. It's just too much info and not the purpose of today's video. Moving on. Now, the Bible seems to indicate the beast, how this beast comes into power, and the type of system he will use in what is described and resembles that of a one world government. So let's ask ourselves, is the environment right? Do we see something like that happening today? If it's like the global government most leaders and banking financiers are pushing for today and have been for the past few decades, then absolutely yes, the environment is right. And if yes, then according to this section of the text in the Bible, it will only come to pass as it's written in the latter days. And we can first read about it in the book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 where it says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up in the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power, and his seat and great authority. So here we read the beast rises up in verse 1, and if you're curious about the heads and horns, it has a political reference that can be found in the book of Daniel, and there's YouTube studies of this, um, this actual text if you wanted to look into it later as well. Uh, next in verse 2, the beast is described coming into a type of leadership role where a dragon gives him great authority and can be described in what seems to be done in a supernatural type of way. Uh, for, and for those not uh, really familiar with the dragon, it's a reference to Lucifer. And he can be found many times throughout the Bible described as, as one. With this being Lucifer himself, the beast isn't just a person, but is depicted more as a man that's chosen by the darkest entity, which is dwelling in him or with him at this point in time. So, if this is true, we can wonder how did Lucifer break free from the spiritual realm and into ours all of a sudden? Is it human manipulation, knowledge of new technology, a portal even? Maybe. Perhaps the tech acquired wasn't alien, but demonic. And what was found in Antarctica? Maybe something sinister is buried deep in the ice, which leaders seem to value much more than money. Now I think it's plausible, and we'll actually be circling back on this very shortly and see why science might think so too. But we need to analyze a few things first, like how will the world come to accept a single person as a world leader? Well, Revelation 13 verse 3 describes exactly that. Take a look. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. Many believe the beast is killed and then resurrected based off that scripture. Perhaps that is the strong delusion sent by God to the blind and wicked. It's also a duality of symbology actually. Satan mimicking Christ's resurrection and becoming flesh by that of a possession of a man versus Christ becoming flesh. It's more like a perversion of the resurrection and what many believe will make it easy for people to choose and proclaim the beast as the world leader, their Messiah and uh, one that restores order out of chaos, essentially. It's kind of what we see in the world today. I mean, how many times have we heard peace and security or peace and safety? 
Something stated so frequently for so long could be the slogan of the UN at this point. And once the UN and the world actually accept the beast as leader, we then see the beast system start to take shape according to the Bible. In Revelation 13 verse 4 and 7, it reinforces his global power stating, And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Here the beast system is described as a power that's obtained by the beast. It also seems to indicate this power as a global one that reaches over every nation and every one. But what could make this system so powerful as to completely go global and have t total global control? Well, we can read history books and know it hasn't happened like that before. Uh, not yet at least. And maybe because the tech was never there, not until now. As I mentioned previously, there are five parts to this system that seem to be involved when connecting these dots. I will in no order attempt to correlate how each briefly ties into one another and the bigger picture here. Now the first component, artificial intelligence, it's kind of uh, sort of the brain of the network in my opinion. If you recall earlier, I mentioned 5G is going to be bringing us smart cars, smart cities, and smart surveillance. Thus making smart grids where robotics will be able to analyze everything, everywhere, anytime autonomously and finally be able to monitor everyone wherever they go on that grid well AI is already making decisions on its own just look what the military has in its arsenal these weapons make their own decisions and organize together in what's called swarm technology and how about surveillance China does this already and doesn't try to hide it with their citizens Japan has face recognition and surveillance that can depict emotions gender and even the name of a person dropping that package off at your front door. For those thinking that the U.S. is any different, well, uh, let the words NSA and Spygate sink in a little. And you know, it's not just smart surveillance, but Google along with other companies like Apple and IBM have been working on a super intelligent AI for quite some time as well called the Singularity. And now the Singularity combined with the 5G system that's launching soon will essentially create a network that's alive and aware of all things integrated into it. Just imagine a world running on a super brain hive mind computer and not just any computer but one that embodies the entire world. So can we escape the grid? Let's say you go into a rural area or try to avoid the tech altogether. How will it track us if you leave into a quote unquote no coverage area? Well this too is covered in the text. Chapter 13 verse 14 and 15 reads, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And recall he, he had suffered a head wound and came back, so this is in reference to that. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many who would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Notice it says image of the beast had life and speaks and the image has power to kill you. So this image will know if you do or do not worship the beast. So it does see you, but perhaps it's a lot deeper than we think, literally. Something that can monitor you and has the ability to kill you if you don't do as instructed sounds like tracking, but what type? It wasn't until the last several decades that the tech caught up with the prophecy for us here, at least enough to decipher the text. And we are actually told in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, which states, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, saith he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. These passages describe a tracking system, in my opinion, and one that seems to be inserted within the body. This tracking comes under the guise of currency to buy and eat and feed your family with. The mark is no doubt a global banking system at play here, one that's used in a cashless society. A second component to this 5G system ran under AI supervision in what's known as the RFID chip and what I consider to be kind of the heart of the ultimate tracking system. Now it does seem to correlate with both tracking your finance and your person. Maybe this tracking has a hidden upgrade in it, the kind of MK Ultra type upgrade the one the Bible described earlier as being used to kill those who don't worship the beast. If you recall, the 5G network runs using radio frequencies called millimeter waves, and all of which are frequencies found in the tech we've covered so far. 
But who would want to get the chip inserted into their body? And even more so, how will this system make us make us get chipped up? I actually doubt most will cause a fuss. In fact, I think most will probably be willing to accept it just as status quo, maybe trendy. Uh, and here we take a look at India, for example. In India, India recently had a huge run at uh, creating a cashless society. Though it failed recently, it was still considered a successful experiment that was carried out on a mass scale. We're going biometric captured 95% of the civilians' data, which is over 1 billion people's information uh, being captured from this one effort alone. And I believe it was 13% prior to that, if I can recall. But with 5G coming, RFID chips actually back on the rise. And there's some that are volunteering for this chip uh, while other employers are requiring it of their employees. And currently we even see some lawmakers trying to standardize it. So no, this tech isn't going away. It's picking up in steam in the trendy realm. All the while the tech has been hiding off the radar behind the scenes, becoming more powerful and interactable with the network it's, that's coming. And many people you know, also do desire to create a cashless world once and for all. But for those who don't want this system and reject it, uh, will it be possible to avoid? You know, yes, I think so, for sure. But not being able to eat, buy, sell, uh, we'll have uh, many willing to take it. And from the looks of things, refusal could also mean death. Refusal uh, meaning rejecting worship of the beast, after all, you know. But for those who do accept it, there seems to be a worse fate than death actually awaiting you. Uh, scriptures mention that anyone who accepts this mark will be entering into a demonic kingdom. And there will be physical things that actually happen to you once you do take this mark. Uh, Revelation 14, 11 describes it as, uh, the, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, mind you, and they have no rest, day nor night. Who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receive the mark of his name. Now, if you recall the last verse, we mentioned that there will be no rest, day nor night, if you get the mark placed into your body. Just as 4G, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth studies have shown to do. Imagine this uh, much more powerful 5G waves being inserted into your body with the cell networks everywhere transmitting these higher frequencies. Uh, it should probably accomplish a sleepless nights and insomnia with no problem. Not only that, but in Revelation 16:2, it states, Foul and loathsome sores came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. The effects of the mark of the beast written in the last Revelation verse we read seems to align perfectly with what science states behind the frequencies and what they do to people as well. And with 5G in our bodies with constant waves transmitting and data constantly being processed regarding our person, I don't doubt it. And with that technology is reading our minds and killing us if need be something too far out, I think the ability is available even today as covered earlier in the EMF slide. But how will the system be able to track everyone at once to know if you're doing as you're, you're told, as you're supposed to, or in this case, worshiping the one you're supposed to? We would need a fast network to allow fast thinking artificial intelligence. Also, we need fast processing speeds that can handle such loads, such as those needed to compute real time global data on everyone every second while multiple commands are running simultaneously. Well, lucky for us, this tech was recently created and exists now. Which leads me to the third component required to operate this B system called quantum computing, which is what I like to think of as the neurons within the system's brain. Quantum computing is going to be a vital source in handling the load and speed needed to push 5G to its fullest capacity. Uh, the kind of super processing power has actually been harnessed by companies like D-Wave, IBM, Google, or Intel to name a few. The quantum computing will uh, allow fast amounts of information to be processed all at once while it operates in different states at the same time, which means uh, that it can run vertically and horizontally. It can be over here or over there all at the same time. In a very simple nutshell, it works like this. With this technology, it would be like if you search for an answer to a problem. The computing is carried out in a manner that is similar to that of it looking at every book ever written while looking at every page within every one of those books at the exact same time. Now if you compare that with our current computing, which does this process in a very linear manner, it looks at each book, let's say, and then each page individually until it gets your results. But it doesn't really end there either. 
Uh, it will be able to predict data and compute at lightning speeds, a great way to capture data and track things easily, quickly, and what seems to be a perfect solution to a global computing need. If you think that's insane technology, then wait until you hear what scientists want to do next. The scary part is the fact that it's very achievable with all the current technology available today, and especially once it's running on 5G, of course. Now, what are they saying? So scientists strongly believe that technology will, will make it possible for quantum physics to do things like solve complex problems, uh, problems that are so complex they would be used for opening alternative timelines which would allow us to enter other dimensions. This is not a joke. See the articles here, it's actually insane, but you did hear that right. Accessing other dimensions is their goal. So if we do get there, and we will, then what could actually get into our dimension once a portal is open? If it sounds too sci-fi, it's, it's really not. And it's merely a matter of time before they, they execute on this test. But if scientists think we can tap into alternate realities, which would be impossible without some type of technology capable of opening one of these bends in the time and space continuum, then the tech must exist, right? Well, this must be humanity's um, unlucky day, actually, because uh, it does, and it leads us to the fourth component on the list, which is CERN. I believe CERN to be that fourth component to it all, and what I have been considering more and more as the bowels of the system. And though it sits at four in the list, I do think it correlates to the bowels below the belly of the beast and will be the first tech actually used to set things in motion, so to speak. CERN is known as a 47 kilometer long particle accelerator and collider. Uh, just a few years back, employees of CERN found the Higgs boson particle, also known as the God particle. And I don't believe the naming convention to be a fluke. It's probably not when playing and pretending to be God, at least these people are and in recent times uh, CERN has been shut down and is currently in the non-operable mode so they say but don't worry it's only temporary and it will be going back online probably sooner than we think and it also is getting major major upgrades I might add they're expanding the already 47 kilometer long particle collider and making it four times actually bigger than its original size which probably means stronger magnets and faster speeds and who knows what else. But the why is where we really discover the reason. And could they require this size in order to open up the dimension they're seeking? Or will it open a portal directly into the center of Earth, unlocking the gates of hell instead? So what evidence of CERN do we see being used for purposes other than smashing particles together? Because I have another theory that others speculated on in the past so are there clues in the Bible with uh, any text that matches this tech? I think so. And actually, uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 2 and 11, we see something that resembles that very thing. Where it says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of the great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. The angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And so who is Abaddon and Apollyon? Well, Apollyon in Greek is the Greek, uh, Apollyon the destroyer. And uh, Abaddon is also referenced as the beast, whereas Apollyon is referenced as the devil himself. So the beast is the devil himself. Well, this may answer a question I posed earlier on how Lucifer got to Earth from a spiritual realm. And if the tech is valid enough to do so, which I think it will be and very soon actually, and not just that, but aliens. Technology seems to be relative here as well. So when we think about how it's been given to us throughout recent times, create some questions here like, what is it? Aliens or demonic manipulation? It does raise the question about the tech that's been created by us, uh, or rather given to humanity, I should say. Nonetheless, I felt this stance compelling enough to share, and quite frankly, something I see clearly when connecting all these dots. So how about you? Do you believe, not believe, Still skeptical? If you're skeptical but not certain, then maybe the Bible is onto something here. Consider your position on Christ at least and look into things more if you're if you're still unsure. And if not, and if everything I've shared with you today seems unbelievable, far fetched, and God is still dead to you, then don't say you haven't been warned. I guess, you know, just sit back, Morpheus, and get ready for the beast system you're plugging into. Can you hear me now? But for those who believe it, and not sure what you should do now, it's actually super, super simple. 
Someone much smarter than I designed something called the ABCs of faith. And this is really all you need to do, actually. It's acknowledge yourself a sinner, believe Christ rose from the dead in forgiveness of your sins, confess and call on the name of the Lord Jesus, and you shall be saved. That's it. Again, everything I presented here, it's totally up for debate and interpretation. I'm not imposing my ideas on anyone. Uh, so please let me know your thoughts, and I'd really love to hear them in the comment section. That's pretty much it. So God bless, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell if you like what this channel brings, because we drop a variety of new content throughout the week. So take care, and peace, everyone.